Hey guys, Emily here from Sephora Century City and I am so excited to show you guys one of my favorite go-to looks. It's a glitter grungy smoky eye and it is so much fun for going out or even going to concerts, really whatever you have planned. So let's go on and learn about this look. To start my skin, I am gonna go in with the Caudalie Vine Active Glow Activating Anti-Wrinkle Serum. Just to prep my skin, I'm pretty dry so it's gonna make sure that I have some hydration and a really nice glow underneath my skin before I go in with my makeup. It's just gonna ensure that everything stays on and goes on a lot smoother. Next I'm going in with the IT Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream Transforming Moisturizing Super Cream. I am so obsessed with this product. I use it morning and night every single day and I just love the way it sets underneath makeup. I do have pre-rosacea and a little bit of eczema on my face so it truly just helps to deeply hydrate my skin, plump it up, and smooth it through before I go in with foundation. So last for my skincare prep, I'm going in with the Caudalie Reservatrol Lift Eye Lifting Balm. And I do have a little bit of puffiness under my eyes and I'm starting to notice more fine lines than I have before. So I do feel like it's incredibly hydrating, but it does help to kind of plump and smooth through my lines and it just makes my concealer go on a lot smoother. And I do like to take that same formula just over my lips to get a little extra hydration. Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is one of my go-to products right now. I love this formula underneath makeup because it is a very lightweight texture, but it's very hydrating. Now I'm gonna go in with the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer Radiance. I actually really like to mix these two together. So a lot of people like to put the Radiance Primer just by itself on the cheekbones, but for a little bit more of a sheer glow, I mix the two together in my fingers, and then I go in and I tap it just on my cheekbones and anywhere that I want a little extra glow on the skin. I really just love that light reflection that it casts from the highest point of the cheeks. And I just carry the leftovers from my fingers down my nose, on my cupid's bow, and a little bit on my chin, but I'm really focusing most of that product on the cheekbone. Going in with my tried and true foundation, Givenchy Photo Perfection Fluid Foundation with SPF 20 in the color number four, Perfect Vanilla. I can't speak highly enough about this foundation. I'm obsessed with it. I'm using my number 47 brush to pick up a little bit from the back of my hand. And then I start from the center of the face in working downward strokes just to ensure that everything lays really smoothly. I really like putting the foundation on the back of my hand because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over how much I put on my face. I don't like to layer this product on too much because it is medium coverage and it's buildable to full. So I know I'm gonna get the pigments that I want just from the foundation already. So I don't need to layer this on too heavily. So I do like to carry that foundation to my ears and right underneath my neck just to ensure that the color is harmonious from my face to my neck. Going on to concealer. I am using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the color Vanilla. Just taking a little bit, making a triangle underneath my eyes to correct any darkness. I also like taking it in any areas on my face that I do want to pronounce or any areas of shadows. For me, my areas of shadows are right under my lip and right around the nostrils. So I'm just blending that with my number 57 Sephora brush and really working it down and out. I love the downward sweeping motions with the number 57 brush because I really feel like it smooths through my lines and it airbrushes incredibly easily. And you can see I'm kind of using a pretty light hand with it. I'm pulling back on the brush so it really just smooths through the skin. If you put too much pressure, your product's going to move around too much. So I'm going in with my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer in Y31. This one is a tad darker than my skin. It's a little bit more yellow, which you'll see, but that little spot is quite red. So I need the yellow to color correct it just a bit more just to ensure that it doesn't peek through my foundation throughout the day. Now I'm going in back with that NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Vanilla, the same one I was using before, just to cancel out a little bit more of that yellow tone from the concealer that corrected my spot. So now I'm going in with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer in Y21. I love this one because it's a few shades lighter than me, but it really helps to add a boost of light to certain areas of my face that I really want to lighten up. I'm not using this as a concealer. I truly am just using this to boost the light. It's kind of like my highlighter. So I'm taking it on the chin to further pull down my chin to accentuate my heart shape. I'm tapping it around those areas that I feel like I have a little bit more of the shadow. So around my corners of the mouth, my nostril, and pulling out my nose a little bit further as well. I'm using my Black Beauty Blender just to tap through everything one more time. 
just to ensure that everything is really pressed into the skin and just melts really beautifully. And honestly, I feel like the Beauty Blender, it makes my foundation last longer because I'm super dry and I use my Beauty Blender fully saturated with water so everything stays and is very hydrated. So next for brows, I'm going in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in the color Soft Brown. I'm using my Sephora brush number 20 because I love the spoolie that it has on the end to comb up through the brows. But I also love this brush because the number 20 has a really incredible bristle brush for defining but making it not look too pasted on. I feel like I already have enough brows that I don't need to fill too much but I do love a strong brow. So I just take that pomade and comb it upwards by filling underneath my brow first to really get those roots of my brow completely connected. After I get that little root line, I go through and I hold my brush horizontally and flick vertically to ensure that everything looks very soft and natural. As you do your brow with the pomade, I really like to comb through the brow with the brush. It just helps to soften any areas that might be a little bit more harsh, but it also disperses that pomade really beautifully before it completely sets to a water resistant finish. And now we're matching the other side. Same technique using short flicking motions. Just make sure you're looking straight forward in a mirror. That way you can get a very similar shape to each brow. But remember, they are sisters, not twins. So I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel just to set these puppies so they don't move all day. I do have longer brow hairs as well, so I really like to make sure that they are maintained and cleaned up. Now onto the eyes. I am starting with my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion the original formula. I am focusing on my eyes today. I really want a grungy, smoky eye, and I actually want it a little messy and creasy, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I still want it to stay on my lid and not fall under my eye. That's why I'm using a primer. I'm taking a little bit of that product under the eye because I am doing a heavy drop shadow on that lower lash line. So just to ensure everything stays, I'm smoothing it everywhere I'm gonna be putting my eyeshadow. So to start off this grungy eye, I'm taking my Smashbox Always On Gel Liner in the color Fishnet. This is one of my go-tos because it stays on my waterline. I am a contact wearer and things transfer on me all the time. So first I'm just tight lining directly underneath my lashes on that waterline. And now just kind of messily, I'm wiggling this between my lashes on my top lash line to start the first layer of my grungy eye. Now I am doing a very blown out type of eye and I really want that outer edge to be the darkest part of this look. But you can see I'm kind of just haphazardly putting that on there. Have some fun. Don't be too serious about it, it's grungy. Now I'm taking my Sephora number 30 brush and I'm gonna start to tap that color in, starting around the edges. So when you're blending your eyeliner, just make sure that you're blending in areas where you don't want to take too much product away. For example, I want most of my saturation of that color on the outer corner. So I'm blending the eyeliner in the middle and closer to the front of the eye where that water liner was. Now I go back and forth between my finger and the number 30 brush because the finger really warms that product up and presses it into the skin. And I also like the texture that it gives. It's a little bit messier with your finger. So I'm not taking any actual color liner under my eye at this point. I'm just carrying what's left over from the number 30 brush because there is a lot of eyeliner on that brush already. I'm just carrying it down a little bit so we can see the shape that I wanna create so nothing feels too heavy on the lid from the get-go. So going on and matching this side, I am tight lining by wiggling that liner right underneath my lid and just in between the lashes on the top lash line. And again, don't worry about being too precise with this. That number 30 brush is incredible and it's gonna blend everything for you in that perfect way. And don't forget to balance out that top part by carrying it underneath your eye. However, make sure you keep the intensity on that outer corner. Now going in with the Laura Mercier Editorial Eye Palette Intense Clays. I'm taking that darkest black color, again, picking up that number 30 brush, and I'm just gonna intensify this liner by tapping that color directly on top and then slightly smoothing it in towards the middle. I'm not gonna carry this color out too far because that's what the transition color is going to do for us in a bit. I really just wanna focus, again, on that area of intensity. I think having a point of intensity in your smoky eye is absolutely essential, and that's just gonna allow you to really customize where you place your product. So you guys notice I switched up my brush. I'm using the Sephora Collection number 86 brush just to clean through the edges a bit. So I'm still just patting in that Laura Mercier black color, kind of messily right on top of that eyeliner that I had just placed. 
ensuring that it looks faded, but don't worry about getting it too perfect at the moment. We're going for that grungy look today. So now you guys are gonna see I'm picking up just a little bit of that color on my 86 brush. And I'm taking that just through the crease at my deepest part to kind of smooth through that color just a little bit more. So now I'm gonna go into the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette using the color Salios. It's that darker gray tone. I'm picking up that color with my number 27 Sephora brush and you can see I'm placing it right into that crease. That first placement is on that outer corner so I can really intensify that outside but I am really diffusing out this tone. I'm taking that color all the way up to the front bone of my brow to give it a little bit more of that lived in rocker edge. With whatever's left over on my brush I just continue to diffuse that out and upwards. It's a pretty look, but it's a little bit more edgy. So in order to give that really grungy eye, it's nice to have a blended transition with a little bit more texture around that darker area. When I get to the outer edges right there, I do like to place my brush and drag inwards because I don't want the eye to droop down. And I find that that helps to lift the eye a little bit on that outer corner. So now I'm going into that darkest black color in the Kat Von D palette. It's the color Shax. And I'm picking that up on my number 19 brush and placing directly in that outer edge of my eye. And you can see when I focus that, I'm really dragging it up and into my eye socket just to intensify the color a little bit more, just to ensure there's a true gradient from darkest to light on this eye. So now with my number 18 shadow brush, I'm taking that and carrying it in between my lashes on the bottom lash line. I really like to blend and balance my under eye as I go, just so nothing feels too top heavy and I can really see the overall look that I'm trying to create. However, you see I'm always starting from the outer corner of my eye and then I drag it towards the middle. That still allows you to keep the intensity on that outer corner. Now I'm going back in with that Smashbox Fishnet Eyeliner and I'm just intensifying my waterline. I'm so obsessed with this. I know I already talked about it, but I love this liner in my waterline. It is super dark. Ooh, it just gives so much intensity. And I do carry it slightly down in between my lashes after I've gone on the waterline, just to ensure that you can't see any skin. We really want this as dark as it can be. Going back in with my number 18 shadow brush. I'm just smudging through that to ensure there's no clumpiness, but it still looks a little messy. So now I'm picking up on that darker gray color, again in the Kat Von D palette. Using my number 86 brush, I'm going in to really diffuse out that color. So first it does look a little bit harsh, but when you take that darker gray color, it really helps to create a little bit more of a blend, just very similar to the transition that we have on the top of the eye. And you can see that softens it, but also helps to drop that shadow just a little bit more for a little bit more emotion behind it. And I am being sure to carry that bottom out just a little bit further so that it does frame my eye and the top shadow connects to the bottom shadow. So now I'm going in with the Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pot in the color Steal the Show. This is such a gem. It is one of my favorite finds. And I'm picking it up on my middle finger and I am just slapping it on in the front where you can see a little of that creasing. Oh, I just love this color so much. So you can see it's a little bit more metalized than the shades I've been using. For the most part, the eye has been completely matte with no shimmer. And that really pops out more dimension of the eye and it gives it a little bit more edge. This is an emotional look. I want to feel emotional when I'm wearing this. Makeup doesn't always have to be perfect for me. I love when makeup gets a feeling behind it. And I really like placing this with my finger because my finger does give a little bit more smooth application when I use it. So now I'm taking that number 11 brush from Sephora Collection and I'm adding just a bit of that cream shadow pot underneath the front corner of my eye so that I also get the dimension underneath the eye. I'm not taking it quite as far in the middle. I'm really just focusing it near that tear duct to give me a little bit of that twinkle. So now I'm going in with the Bite Beauty Prismatic Pearl Multi Stick in the color Oyster Pearl. And I'm just slapping this directly on my eye. Now, my eyes have a little bit more extra skin at the top and I really wanted this look to come through over my lid. So I'm placing this in the front part above my crease and blending with my finger up towards the brow bone. That's gonna take the dimension from the lid with that metallic shadow and carry it slightly above. So even when my eyes are open, you get that really beautiful flash of prismatic color. Okay, so now I'm going in with the Stila Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow in the color Molten Midnight. Now I did want a little bit of a chunky glitter on this look and this was the perfect glitter for me because it has a black base to it and I didn't want to take away from the depth and intensity of this eye. 
I'm taking my number 11 from Sephora Collection and I am just patting that right over top of the Tarte Shadow Pot. There's really no rhyme or reason for this look. It's supposed to be messy, it's supposed to be edgy, and you should just have fun with it. I do like patting this onto the lid because I feel like it builds a little bit easier. I don't want to take it too far and I feel like when I pat with my number 11 brush I have a little bit more control. Yeah, and I am blending that a little bit more to the middle of the eye so that the most intense areas with glitter is in the front but it fades really nicely to the middle of the eye. Again, for the overall balance of this look I'm taking just a touch of that glitter directly into my inner corners on the lower lash line. And this look is just so much fun if you're going out at night because the lights will hit it just right to give you some rawness and some edginess, but it really just has so much dimension to it. Now I'm going in with the Sephora Collection Lash Craft Curler. I'm not going to be doing false eyelashes with this look because I really want the shadow to speak for itself, but I still want that chunky eyelash look, and in order to achieve that, you definitely have to curl your lashes before that. So now I'm going in with the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. This is one of my favorite mascaras I've ever used in my life. It's incredibly volumizing and just makes my lashes so full and so big, but you can really layer it on to get a very dramatic bold lash. I'm very prone to having mascara transfer under my eyes throughout the day and this is honestly one of the only ones that never transfers on me. And I can put it on for a very natural lash or as you see here, I will do two layers on each eye of mascara to really give that intense look. Now I'm taking it to the bottom lash line, and again, this is one of the only ones I can actually use on my bottom lash line, but I do like to smooth through my bottom lashes with my finger so it takes a little bit of that excess product away. If you guys have problems with mascara transferring under your eyes, this is a really great tip that I learned for myself. Directly after putting on your mascara, just smooth through it and put your finger on it and it'll take the excess away so it's less likely to transfer. Because you want it grungy and you want it edgy, but you don't want your mascara smudging too far. So after going in with my smoky eye, I do like to add a little bit more of that NARS concealer just to clean up any areas where I might have gotten a little bit of fallout. However, for the most part, I didn't get very much fallout, but just to create that cleaner complexion look, since it is such a messy eye, it's important to have the complexion really flawless. So after I blend that downwards with my number 57 brush, I am tapping and pressing it into the skin using my Black Beauty Blender. It just again airbrushes the finish and it ensures that there's no bristle marks in the skin. So to go back to complexion, I'm starting with Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze Powder Bronzer in the color Fair to Light. And I'm adding a little bit of warmth back to my skin with my number 59 Sephora brush. I love how big and fluffy this brush is because it just diffuses the product effortlessly. And while I want the complexion really flawless and blended, I'm not being too particular on exact placement. I'm taking it along my cheekbones, on my chin, on the tip of my nose, and although it doesn't matter, but just in case, I'm taking it on the sides of my forehead. If you don't have bangs, definitely take it to your forehead. And I'm blending that up and out in circular motions. Now some of you guys might notice I did not use a setting powder on top of my cream before I went in with a bronzing powder. I think this is one of my favorite things to do is to use a bronzer on top of a liquid. I truly feel like the two just kind of melt into each other and it creates a little bit more of a soft, faded, melted effect. So it doesn't look like powder setting on top of your skin, it just looks like your skin truly has a bronze to it. Up next, I'm going in with Kevin Aquan, The Contour Book, The Art of Sculpting and Defining Volume 2. And I'm picking up the sculpting powder right there on that side. I use this palette almost every day of my life. It's my quick to go palette because it has the eyeshadows, the highlight, and the contour in it. Now with my number 79 brush, I'm just slightly defining my cheekbones a little bit further, but I'm focusing that in the back and just slightly blending forward. It's not too much of a contoured look, but I do want the sculpt there, so I want that natural shadow color to really give me that sculpt and definition back to my face by taking it along the cheekbone under the jaw, on the sides of my nose, and on my temples. After I get that in there, I'm taking my Beauty Blender, again because I haven't used a powder to set in between my cream and my colors. I'm just making sure that everything is blending really well and very pressed into the skin. That way it just looks like skin and it doesn't look like powder setting on the surface. Next up, I'm going in with my Benefit Cosmetics California Blush. 
I'm picking it up with my number 93 blush brush from Sephora Collection. This is a very diffused, very lightweight feathery brush, and I love it for a very subtle, natural blush application. Now with a look like this, I think it's really elegant and very chic if you take a blush a little higher on the cheekbone as opposed to just focusing it on the apples. So next up, I'm going in with my Hourglass Vanish Flash Highlighting Stick in the color Champagne Flash. Okay guys, I think I've found a new favorite highlight. It adds such a beautiful dewiness to the skin and it's almost like a gloss, but it does have a beautiful champagne-y undertone with beautiful light reflective qualities. And I really like placing it directly on top of the skin and blending with my Black Beauty Blender. I'm making sure not to take it too far down on my cheekbone because I really just want that highest point to be glossy, almost like I've been sweating at a concert, but it still looks flawless. And with my Beauty Blender, I'm continuing to pick up a little bit from that product and carry it and build that color just to make sure it doesn't look too glossy or move around my foundation too much and you can see it just gives the skin a really beautiful glow so I'm going back into that Kevin Aquan sculpting kit and I'm picking up on the candlelight powder I'm using that just to slightly set underneath my eyes with my number 59 brush. This will still carry the glow across my entire face, but because it is a powder, it will help to control a little bit of shine. So now I'm going in with my Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner in the color Stealth. It's a very natural shade on me, so I love using this one to slightly overdraw my lip and make it look a little bit more rounded and full. And I just start on the corners of my mouth and carry that upwards to really build that roundness on my upper lip. My bottom lip is a little bit more full than my top, so I don't really overdraw my bottom lip, but I do try to balance the two out by building a little bit more of a round shape on my upper cupid's bow area. Now with that color, I will carry it all the way through the lip. Now just for a fluid blend, I like to take my finger and just kind of smooth through everything just to ensure that it's setting really naturally into the lip. So next, I'm taking the Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner in the color Hush Hush. This one's deeper, so it's going to add more of a contrast to my lip. However, I'm not really doing a bold lip, but I wanted that extra definition. So by placing this just on the outer edges of that first color, it gives me a little bit more balance and definition. I like to smooth the two of those together just to make sure that you can't see where one line starts and where one line stops. So now I'm going in with Ciate London Glitter Flip in the color Undressed. This is a really beautiful nude shade and it does have a little bit of texture. It has that really nice glittery tone to it once you flip your lips together. And with my number 22 Sephora brush, I love this one for blending with more control because it's such a precise brush. I'm just softening those edges so that I still keep the intensity of that lighter color just in the middle, but they fade beautifully into those outer edges. And then just to activate the glitter, I like to flip my lip just like the title says. To finish off the lip, I'm going in with Marc Jacobs Beauty enamored high shine lip lacquer lip gloss in the color pink flamingo I just wanted a tinge more pinkiness to this lip color I thought it was a little bit too nude so by adding that high shine with that beautiful light pink undertone it finishes off the look and it ties it into that blush color I am using my finger to apply this color just to ensure that I don't move any of the other lip products that I've used underneath the gloss it also gives me a little bit more control over where I can put that shine. To finish it off, I'm going in with the Tatcho Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. This thing, I swear, I use this all the time. Sometimes before I go to bed, I'll just spray it on my face for a little extra hydration. I bathe in it, I don't know. So I'm just setting it just to add that extra dewiness to the skin to really support that glowy, kind of sweaty, but not too sweaty look. And for my last step, I'm just going to zhuzh up the hair, make it a little messier, and call it a day. It's time to go out. Rock on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun creating this look with you guys today. Glitter grungy smoky eye is absolutely my go-to. I love it. If you did like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you can see more fun content like this. And leave us a comment in the bottom section because we really wanna see what you have to say about this look and if you wanna see more stuff like it. If you wanna follow me on any of my social media, my handle is beautybywoody. Again, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.